As with every war, the goals are always the same. Divide, conquest, and destroy. The only difference is now, the weapons are not guns, or bombs, or missiles. They are called spread, BCE, swap, austerity, fiscal compact, ESM, credit rating, and many more. They're equally strong weapons of mass destruction. But it's the army of the finance speculation, the one who strangles the economy, the one who harasses the democracies, the one that makes us scared slaves, the one that imposes a lifestyle upon all of us that we don't like. It seems we are watching the dawn of a new era, a period where discoveries in all of the different sectors of science and medicine should have allowed an easier life for us to have defeated all the diseases and world famine. We would all have had far more free time because the machines would have worked for us. But it hasn't gone that way. The modern world obviously needs some improvement. Cancer and other epidemic diseases are responsible for deaths at an unstoppable rate. The pandemic spreads globally and increases like the incomes for the pharmaceutical industries. Hunger in the world has not been defeated. Violence keeps devastating entire world areas. And the situation of poverty is forcing entire populations to migrate. The United States are just like the old and beloved Europe, where the social differences are getting wider. Rich people are becoming more rich. The middle class is being pushed towards poverty, and the lower class spirals uncontrollably towards misery. America is still under the crisis path of subprime mortgages that definitely undermines the last bit of security in people, and instead has generated a negative domino reaction overseas. On the other side, the European side, the EU states themselves are so strangled by debt balance sheets that a big part of the state income is destined to pay just the interest without any possibility to reduce the debt itself. America and Europe should have been the ones supported by the rest of the world. Instead, they have been crushed by the most powerful financial crisis in history, which has brought social and cultural implications still to be fully understood. Are we so sure that the American and European situation had different origins as the media wants us to believe? Or instead, are they just two faces on the same coin? Maybe it's the final attack for the world supremacy from an entity that doesn't have a flag or state or affinity. The new world order, the one of finance, which has slowly taken control, taken it away from the politician, which has in turn become a slave to the system. Nobody tries to raise their voice. No single representative of the sovereign population dares to speak up. But I will. We have to reclaim the power. To snatch it away from the powers of finance. The finance that magically creates money from nowhere. We must instead give it back to the citizens of the economy. In the name of prosperity, wealth and freedom. No political leader will ever say that money is being printed in a private institution. However, the European Central Bank is private, and the American Federal Reserve is private. And yet, the banks flutter on nothing. You must know that if tomorrow all the owners of bank accounts and other deposits should arrive in the bank to take away their cash, only the first 3% could be satisfied before finishing the cash money. Don't believe me? Have a look at what Cyprus is facing now. More countries are destined to follow. Maurice Saleh, winner of the Nobel Prize for Economics, wrote in 1999, the actual money creation from nowhere operated by the bank system is identical to the creation of money by forgers. The results are basically the same. The only difference is who gets the profit of it. More than 80 years ago, Bertolt Brecht wrote in Santa Giovanna di Mascelli that it was more criminal to establish a bank and then rob it. Aha! Now there's a true profit. At the time, the weapons of mass destruction were not yet created by finance. Which ones? Well, between the lies and the misleading, all at the service of finance, the choice is huge. The ESM, for example, is the European mechanism of stability. Or is it? The new Save the State Funds, or as we all know in reality, are the bailouts to help just the banks and businesses. Just take a look at Greece. For all of this support, 52% goes to the international banks and to the business owners to help them, to reward them, to save them. There is 23% which goes to the European Central Bank, 
Then there is 20%, which is designated for the Greek banks. And finally, just a meager 5% actually goes to the Greek state and their citizens. Something, or should I say some things, are clearly wrong here. You must understand something. The user is only afraid of one thing, which is that his client will die. The user has to constrict them, so he can make them a slave, but the client doesn't have to die. I'd like you to keep in mind something very important, which is when all of us are asked to tighten up the belt, is Europe asked to do the same? This is bullshit. Sometimes there's a gentleman who asks us just that. Mr. Van Rompuy, President of the European Council, elected by governments and not by the citizens. This person has been called out publicly by a British deputy in 2010 as being, quote, expert, capable, and dangerous. The silent killer of European democracy and European nations. No, no, no. He is wrong. He is just another slave of finance. A slave of the big banks, of Goldman Sachs, One for All, the big names, Bilderberg, Aspen, Trilateral, and these names, these conspirators, they all want us to believe that it's a lie. Conspiracies, as they call it, but instead, it's all true. We are familiar with one of the big, powerful people in the world. Fifty years ago, in 1963, President Kennedy signed the 1110 Act, where he took away the exclusivity from the Federal Reserve and gave the Treasury Department the faculty to print money. This was a big strike to overpower the Fed, which, by the way, is a private bank, and also the banking system. It was June 4th, 1963, and less than six months later, President Kennedy was killed. Coincidence? Obviously. You must realize that changing politics is simply not enough. Even swapping out the old caste in the current parliament won't work. The real revolution is an internal act. It is in our conscious, and it is based on changing our mental perception, to pass our egocentrism, and to acknowledge what is the final goal in our society. Not the profit for a few, but the wealth for all. You, just tell me, are you happy? So, from this moment, since the finance started the war, I declare to the men and women of power, so big, so few, so timid, with what weapons shall we fight back? With the power of information, with communication, and the sharing of my knowledge, with all of the people in the world rising up as one voice. Now, they know that I know, but now you know as well. My friends, happiness is freedom. Freedom is still in the distance, but the choice has been made.